Welcome to the AV Huddle, the place for AV professionals to get the latest news, updates and stories from the leading commercial manufacturers and suppliers. Hear from end users while we dive into new technology, business strategy and innovative ways AV is shaping the sector. Let's jump into the huddle. Hi, good morning everybody. So uh, welcome to this first session with AVM Solutions and um, today we've got Ian uh, from LG on as a guest and the idea of today's session is just to understand where LG are, what's happening in the AV industry, what the future lies and just a general chit chat uh, about the AV sector and the technology. So welcome Ian and first of all um, thank you for spending your time today with us and it'd be great if you want to give us a quick intro about yourself and what you do and a little bit about the division you're in please. Sure, no problem. Well, thanks for having us. Um, so my name is Ian Tolfrey. I've been uh, in the AV industry for 20 plus years and my current role is working at LG, looking after some of our key partners in the large format display division. So uh, my support is given to a number of different integrators um, across various different markets, uh, different vertical markets from corporate meeting rooms through to retail installations, through to control and command uh, video wall uh, systems. And obviously, I look after AVM Solutions. Oh, okay. um, and that's everything from uh, helping out with designing um, specifications, uh, putting pricing together, undertaking demonstration and um, evaluations of models, uh, as well as dealing with all the behind the scenes stuff. Um, so you mentioned you kind of deal with a lot of different sectors. So what, what seems to be the kind of the hot sector at the moment um, with everything going on? So at the moment, um, obviously, COVID's had a massive impact on on what we do uh, and and the AV industry as a whole. Um, things that people are working in the live events sector have been absolutely sideboard with 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 no business because all live events have been cancelled. So that's really affected the rental side. Um, other areas have been affected, certainly retail and corporate. Um, though we are starting to see corporate now coming back, and certainly. In the current month, so we're talking July, August, September, education is a very key sector for us. Um, we're having a good uh, a good summer with uh, integrators who specialise in education, putting in screens in classrooms and teaching environments, uh, university video walls, etc. Um, I think everywhere has been affected this year. Um, corporate is starting to bounce back. We're starting to see more and more projects coming onto the horizon. Uh, admittedly with a two to three month lead time, if not more on some of the projects. Uh, but there is some some low hanging fruit that's also coming through on a fairly regular basis. So the market is slowly starting to, starting to pick up, but it is still a challenge out there. Yeah, so I think, as you said, COVID had an a impact to everybody. Um, but in, in, I guess, this sense, a lot more people are using the technology for remote working or remote communication. Um, so I guess the demand has changed from sector to sector. And do you see this being the future trend then, you know, going forward in a couple of years time, this is going to take off? Um, I hope I hope everyone doesn't work from home because it means no one's <laughs> going to be meeting rooms in, in, and large screens. Um, I think the, the, the focus at the moment is certainly on desktop monitors, on video collaboration, you know, um, Microsoft Teams, Cisco WebEx, et cetera. Um, so that is obviously in high demand at the moment. We are seeing some corporates and we are seeing some business come back. So I don't think it's fair to say that all meeting rooms and video walls and reception areas will be completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to take a few months for that to that that business to start building back up again. Um, it's been the norm now for the last five months to work from home yeah. and order everything online. So, you know, I've not been able to get out to see my customers. Likewise, my customers haven't been able to get to see their clients either. Um, where LG are focusing is on the collaboration side of things. So we've got a number of partnerships in place with people like Cisco, um, people like Polycom, Jabra, Logitech, where we've developed the screen and the codex and the system on chip that runs our screens in conjunction with these other manufacturers. So that as an integrator, once you, you choose a product, you choose an LG screen, it will seamlessly integrate with a number of these other systems, also Teams as well, of course. Um, so it, it, it's it's a more rounded solution from LG and and you as a partner. Yeah. Um, it's more cost effective uh, and it means the customer gets a better experience at the end of the day. 
Okay, well, I guess that takes me on to the next question, really, was about, you know, future roadmap in terms of technology and with the ever-changing environment. Um, you know, I think one thing you touched on there was integration with, with partners, mm-hmm. um, which seems like maybe LG was a, ahead of the time and kind of planned that in advance. Um, but, you know, w- w- what's new? You know, what, what's, what's coming up? Uh, what else is on the roadmap that, that people can expect? Uh, So on the roadmap this year, or from this year leading into next year, um, we are moving away from our standard HD screens. Um, So all of our all of our native offerings are going to be 4K. Um, We've got a new range of 4K screens, which has got our what we call WebOS platform, which is our digital signage platform. Um, These screens also have built-in memory, so they can host signage from other parties. For example, Triple Play, App Space, etc. There is still a push um, on um, OLED screens. So for the really high-end screens where um, you want blacks that are truly black and colours that pop out the screen, um, we're certainly seeing uh, more and more opportunity with these in going into retail. So there's a focus there. Um, we're also very, very heavily investing in LED at the moment. Okay. So LG as a business has a huge portfolio of, of LED uh, modules, tiles and cabinets. Everything from extremely fine pitch LED from sub one millimetre up to outdoor uh, LED, curved LED, um, and LED that can go into sports stadiums. So it's you know completely weatherproof as well. Okay. There's a huge focus on that at the moment. Okay, that's that's interesting. Is that because of just naturally progression of, of innovation? You're just always looking at the next step, the next step. Or has there been a real demand from from consumers asking for this? We're seeing more demand for LED. Um, mm. A few years ago, LED was really expensive, yeah. and it was if you wanted a, a two by two or a three by three video all. It, the price of LED far outstripped what you could achieve with, you know, nine fifty-five inch screens. Now the price of LED, because it's becoming more mass production, and we're getting the economies of scale, it means that the cost is coming down, and people are seeing LED in more places. Mm. So your, you know, your CEOs, your IT directors are actually looking around, saying, well, instead of putting a screen on there where you've got bezels for a video wall, why don't we look at an LED option? Mm. Um, and they, they seem to be coming around to that thought process more. And accordingly, the budgets are being adjusted as well. Okay. So the budgets are being slightly increased for yeah. LED. You can get a much, much better viewing experience if you use LED. Yeah. And LG are running training courses for partners like yourselves where we can help with the installation and things like that. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Sounds good, sounds good. And um, do you see... You know what? What do you see in terms of influences in the market that can shape you know future technology? You know, I know like you know COVID had a big impact on integration and remote use, but you know, is there anything else that you know we've not seen that maybe LG is considering or things that you know you've seen from other customers and other other markets? Good question. Um, I've not seen anything else coming through from LG yet, which is going to be radically changing the market. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting towards a stage now where screens and video walls are are the accepted norm. Um, I think LED is going to be the next next big jump, uh, which we've obviously touched on. Mm -hmm. I think also we've got or we're looking at uh, unique products like transparent screens. So just sort of the new wow screens that you can literally see through and then you will put something behind them. So they're very much aimed at retail. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment, new innovation has slightly, slightly slowed down because obviously COVID this year has knocked everyone for six. Um, I think at ISE next year in Barcelona, I think we'll start to see some new innovations. Uh, Personally, I'm not aware of anything radical coming out of LG, but then that we do tend to keep things under wraps. I was going to say, so yeah, yeah, you're not holding it, back. It may you? well be in the factory already. <laughs> I just haven't been told about it. You can't give us some exclusive uh, exclusive news there. But no, that's, that's oh, unfortunately not. I, even I don't know. So <laughs> no, that's that's fair enough. No, but transparent screen screen sounds are uh, quite quite useful actually. You know, mm. um, in terms of what it can offer. Um, so yeah, but I guess we will look forward to that in the future. Um, yes, it's going to be an interesting one. That we've 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 had some screens out in the market already, which are transparent. Yeah. Um, and certainly on the in in Europe, they're being used on a on a regular basis in a yeah. particular manufacturer. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited that that's going to come over to the UK and start to be adopted, mainly in the retail channel. But I yeah. think that channel has to find its feet following COVID first. Sure, sure. And is is there more being done in terms of not just the display, but the back end technology in terms of data? And how data is used uh, or communication? You know, is there anything there happening with LG? Um, so we're always redefining and, and upgrading our WebOS platform, um, which allows us to um, host signage and, and offer f- extra features and benefits. 
in terms of data, we, we don't, uh, our screens are merely are purely the endpoint. Yeah. So we don't have anything that captures data or can use that. Okay. Um, but that would really, um, you'd be looking at a third party company to partner with us, integrate with our system on chip yeah. um, software, and then correct, collect data to the oh, screens yeah. or pressure pads to measure footfall that come through a doorway, for example. Okay. So okay. that would really be a third party company rather than LG directly. Sure, sure. Um, and I'll probably just ask you one last question. Um, so, you know, what message would you give um, to other kind of AV integrators or other AV sectors out there? You know, you've got this opportunity to go and talk to whoever you want to do, you know, what message would you give to them? I think it's, it, it's, for everyone just to stay confident that that, that we will recover from the, from covid um a lot of integrators are shedding staff at the moment we, we see that happening all the time a lot of end users are shedding staff um i can say that from a from a manufacturer's position lg are securely placed to continue to supply the market um i know it's going to be tough out there i think at the end of the day you know we want to work with any integrator that comes to talk to us we will support anyone as best we can um and you know, please reach out if, if they've got any queries. Yeah, so basically your business is operational, factories are running, people, support staff is there, teams are there. It's business yeah. as usual, but just on a smaller scale potentially. It's, yeah, it's, it's business as usual on, on a much smaller scale, unfortunately. But there are signs that's going to grow. And every month since the end of April, business is ramping up. So yeah, we're looking forward to an exciting Q3 and Q4 and oh. certainly 2021. Sounds good. Sounds good. Brilliant. Um, thank you very much, Ian. Uh, we appreciate your time and uh, thank you for the information. We'll speak soon. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the AV Huddle. Don't forget to like, comment, follow and subscribe to get the latest AV updates. AV Huddle, powered by AVM Solutions.